Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. This week's artist is Cinderella, and as you can see by our rankings so far, we are not agreeing all the way. Mr. Tim and Mr. Bill oh, yeah. think Night Songs is better than Long Hold Winter. Cowboy... And myself yeah. disagree. So let's just jump right into Heartbreak Station. If you missed the previous videos, go watch those down below. Who wants to kick us off with some Heartbreak Station? I will be more than happy to start off Heartbreak Station. Well, let's lay it on mm -hmm. us. So uh, this album, this is where they fully embrace the more blues and they almost wanted to explore a little bit of country I feel like at times on this album mm -hmm. which I have very mixed feelings about I mean 1990 this is where I mean country itself is taking a turn right you've got Birth Brooks full on producing albums you have Toby Keith almost no he produced 91 so Toby Keith wasn't there yet um is a the early 90s is really a boom in the new sounding country where it mixed some of the elements of, you know, more like uh, blues, rock, or some of the hair metal elements even into that country sound then. Mm -hmm. And I would say overall, this album itself is almost like a bridge between the two if you wanted to go between them. Um, which at times it works, at other times it doesn't work. Um, more things changed. My comment, it was a lot different. Definitely more on the whole blue side of things. But I think it was probably their best intro in this discography. Hmm. Um, what's got me doing time? Kind of a funky beat. All right, I see where this might be going. But yeah, that song is just not for me. I mean, I kind of like the beat to it though, but. What's it be? Shelter me? All right. And this is back to, you know, what we all know that the girl is going to have on the album. Uh, Heartbreak Station? I'm conflicted. Because if I remember right, this is the one of the songs that the Dobro has actually played. Which, fun fact, the Dobro is actually my favorite musical instrument. Um... That's part, I'm very partial. That's one of the first instruments I actually learned to play growing up. So That's I think cool. there's elements of it that I really want to like. I just, I was never able to really like that song. I don't know why. Like, everything about it, I should like it, but I just don't. Um, Sick for the Cure... Uh, it sounds like a CCR song. Um, it tries to get there. It's not them. But it isn't terrible. Um, one for rock and roll. I think we got some more Dobro on this, if I'm not mistaken. At least that's what it sounds like to me. That being said, it's okay. I really wasn't a fan of it overall either. Dead Man's Road definitely has some uh, country sounds in there. And so it's, uh, the way I described it, it's country, beating blues, beating rock, all in one song. And it's an, it's an interesting, and in all the years I've listened to Cinderella and this song, I still don't know if I like or don't like this song. I actually don't know. Because there are some times where I like it, it would be in my top songs. There's other times I listen to it, it's like, are you sure about that? Are you sure you actually <laughs> like that song? Do you really like it? Um, I don't know. That's... I'm not going to go too much more. My own uh, self-deliberation. Make your own way. <sighs> Sounds... 
basically everything else up to this point. Nothing really new coming out of it. The guitar solo, I felt like, was the best part of it, which was actually a pretty good guitar solo. Um, Electric Love was a solid intro, and actually I felt like this was a really good blues rock song, in my opinion. A lot of good elements inside of it. Um, Love God Bad. It's a good ending. I like the song. I actually wish this would have been the outro as opposed to Winds of Change. Might be a hot take on that one. Um, Winds of Change was also a good song. Not sure it was a good ending song, though. I mean, if Winds of Change where it's flowing, you know, like, yeah, they're changing, they're doing everything, which, I mean, this is, you know, the last album because they take a six-year break after this one where Kiefer lost his voice due to crisis. But... I don't know. Cinderella didn't change that much year on out, so it's kind of also was a weird ending. All in all, it's a interesting album. This one's even more of a roller coaster than the last one for me, though. Hmm. All right. What about you, Tim? Okay, so this would have been the tour that I saw live. Um, and I remember, uh, the piece of merch I got was a back patch with the logo and some skeleton dude riding like a train. And there are a lot of train references to this album, uh, including the more things change, which was, you know, it was a decent opener. Um, love got, love's got me doing time. Uh, I thought was hilarious. Shelter me. I thought, um, like, yeah, it's a single, but like the production on it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of really um, interesting layers going on. I thought the bass drum and the snare drum sounded in amazing. Uh, and there's a saxophone solo. Um, <laughs> Gotta throw that in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought like uh, the song itself, it's okay. It does a couple interesting little turnarounds with some odd time signatures. Uh, but yeah, I thought, it, you know, I mean, it's it's not Gimme Shelter and it's not Shake Me. But it's Shelter Me. And uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, which brings me to Heartbreak Station, the title track song which I thought the snare sounded terrible on that song. Uh, so it was a really weird uh, juxtaposition after how good it sounded on the, the previous song. Um, uh, Heartbreak Station, structurally, it's just a power ballad. Lyrically, it's pretty hilarious, though. There's all kinds of crazy stuff being said on there. Um, the one I wrote out was Waiting on a Memory. Um, Sick for the Cure um, I mentioned it on uh, the last album Long Cold Winter with uh, Take Me Back they do like the weird drum intro with the cowbell that Cozy Powell started on that album uh, this album which I should mention is the only album where Cinderella's drummer actually plays the drums on it uh, mm -hmm. this one is Fred Corey um, let's see yeah, and then Sick for the Cure 2, when the cowbell stops, the tambourine starts. Uh, one for rock and roll. Uh, my only notes say, but it's a country song? Yeah. Um, and then the drum sound uh, that does appear in that, I did not like as well. It sounded really weird. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and then the album just from there on out really falls apart for me. Uh, Dead Man's Road, it's more country. Make Your Own Way, it's meh. Electric Love, meh. Love Gone Bad, it's actually kind of cheesy. And then, yeah, Winds of Change is probably the worst closer in the discography. 
and uh, should not have been a closing song at all. Uh, but it and Heartbreak Station both do have John Paul Jones credited uh, for the string arrangements. So at the very least, that's kind of interesting. But yeah, I've, I, yeah, they're going a little more bl bluesy rock with direction on this album for sure. Uh, it's also the first one where they kind of self-produce it. Um, and it sounds fine. There's nothing like really offensive about the production other than the weird drum sounds here and there. Um, I wanted to like it though. I thought it started off pretty strong, but ultimately I don't think, uh, I think, I don't think this one's as good. I want to follow up with that because we are almost eye to eye. Okay. Uh, the more things change, more blues rock. I like the lines turned on the TV to the same old news. Everybody thinks they got the answer to the same old blues. I uh, wish you would have stopped with that poor man Axl Rose vocals, though. Mind you, you said slap button is only for Guns N' Roses, not Axl Rose. Um... <laughs> I think I liked Bad Streamless but, Blues but, better. But Guns N' Roses is Axl Rose, and Axl Rose is Guns N' Roses. Not according oh, to the... Is, no that, is that the thing? Is that the thing? No. <laughs> Not according to the, the November Rain video. It's, it's, it's Slash. Well, yeah. <laughs> but where's Izzy? Yeah, where's Izzy? I bet Puff Daddy, he, he probably involved with that. Uh, fuck, where was I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Love's Got Me Doing Time, 80s wah, and some funk. Wasn't really a fan, but it wasn't bad or offensive, and I like the pauses. Shelter Me, straight southern rock and blues with a little Beatles thrown in. I dug it. Things pick up on the second verse. I like to check out Mr. Politician in his suit and tie, but when the doors are closed, there ain't nothing he won't try. Actually, I like most of the lyrics on this one. I need more lyrical content than Girls, Girls, Girls. When that sax kicked in, that made it a top song contender. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody mentioned the sax solo. Uh, Heartbreak Station, speaking of lyrics, the title track, while just a concept that's been done to death, I think they pulled this one off. It's better than bringing on the heartbreak for sure. Uh, acoustic Ballad. That doesn't sound like 80s BS. Like, it's not bad at all. It lost a few points around the 2 minute 30 second mark for that damn Axl Rose vocal. But besides that, the dude had a great voice on it. Good song. Uh, Sick for the Cure, another stony blues rock Axl Rose sounding song. Nothing really new or standing out on that. S sticking, standing out on Sick for the Cure besides the sloppy piano outro, which I liked. Uh, one for rock and roll. It's funny it's called one for rock and roll and it should be called one for country you got twangy <laughs> guitar simple drums it's classic country i will say that this is the vocal range i prefer for the singer not that axel rose falsetto shit dead man's road literally takes a minute to start that was fucking pointless not not now we are doing some southern skinnered rock it was fine until it picked up and dollar store axel comes in I could see Rick Kid Rock cover in this one. <laughs> and you really just said Dollar Store Axel? <laughs> yes. He Dollar Store Axel. Uh, and this man, is, he's at least TJ Maxx Axel. Come on. Man, this is like... Nah, he's nah, Ross. Mm. <laughs> First Make of all, $1.25 store. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so he's the $5 and below Axel. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <God> damn. <laughs> He's the promo copy. <laughs> <laughs> For promotional use only. Yeah. <laughs> Barcode punched out. <laughs> uh, leave us a comment down below. <laughs> All right. Make your own way. I hate the drums on that intro so much. The song, the lyrics, it's so simple, predictable, still better than post adrenalized Def Leppard. Uh, Electric Love, that intro was straight Led Zeppelin. I like the vocal melody, but the guitars were annoying and gave me a headache. 
uh, Love Gone Bad. I like the main guitar riff. The vocal melody was straight up G. <laughs> straight up the band that did Appetite for Destruction. <laughs> I hate the chorus. <laughs> Overall, not a fan. Uh, Winds of Change, fun little acoustic guitar riff. Like the, the, the guitar riff that he plays through the song, through the whole fucking song, was good. Uh, they could have added something else besides ambient noise in the background. Shit was putting me to sleep. What a weird album. It started out really damn strong. Uh, I was thinking it was like, this is going to be my number one. But then that back half was so fucking bad and boring and formulaic. Like, Yeah, yeah that's where I ended up. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's formulaic like who, Jason? I mean, who is it not? The Rolling Stones, Leonard Skinner. I mean, it's all ZZ Top. Yeah, <laughs> that band that did Appetite, the two Use Your Illusion albums. <laughs> all right, <laughs> that song that covered a bunch of songs in a <laughs> pasta bowl. Uh huh. <laughs> all right, Cowboy. <laughs> what you think about Heartbreak Station? This was your first Cinderella album that came out that you were like probably waiting for right uh i wouldn't say i was waiting for it but i agree with 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 y'all about it being real strong in the beginning and the more it got past the middle of it it just kind of fell for me it was it was the first disappointing album for me with them it was i was expecting i mean like i said the beginning of it was great and then the more i listened to it and further into the album it got it was boom it kind of let me down you know it was it was disappointing <clears throat> more country and blues and the country and blues thing they were going real real heavy on it and it's not that i don't like country and you know and the blues sound but it just it was too much for me so I actually respect them for that. Yeah. I think this is the album that... Well, we'll get into it when we get to the rankings. And we've already talked about 1990, so here's a little addendum to that show. Um, But what they're doing compared to, like, say, what the Black Crows are doing in 1990. With that retro, bluesy rock sound. Yeah. Yeah. On, I, I actually I was talking to somebody on Facebook. I asked them about the '96 record, but and they said, "Oh, well, that's the main, you know the radio doesn't want to play that kind of music anymore." I was like, "Well, they were playing the Black Crows. I mean, the Black Crows survived. You know, Shake Your yeah. Money Maker was. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing that. Hey, little thing, that you like you. But I don't right. remember. I don't Which remember that's a cover. This. Yeah, I think the name Cinderella hurt them more than them changing their sound. I think they were labeled as an 80s glam metal band, whereas the Black Crows weren't really labeled that. Right. Yeah. They were more Americana. Yeah. And I think but, Cinderella but was more... Cinderella is not that far away from it. No, it, they, they're not that far away. And, on, and some, some of it's better than... Sure. You know... And I don't think it started here. I think it started on Long Cold Winter. I think Long Cold Winter, that opening track, has that oh, I mean, has that blues, has that some other basis of good music, that Stones sound. Whereas sure. the first album, I think they were chasing that eighties. They were chasing the trend at the time. I think. Yeah. I think by this point like, in 1990, was, they're was, writing what they want to write. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. 1990, the country ballad was a trend, too, though. Warrant did it. Poison did it. True. Motley Crue did it. But, bon Jovi did it. Like, it was a trope then, too. Yeah, it was. Much like the power ballad. Yeah. I don't know. It... it 1990 though was a year that like the Tesla 80s was doing it. They were still doing like the 80s. Well, at least Def Leppard. Well, Def Leppard was six years behind though, so right. <laughs> never mind. 
So you got you gotta this be slang. Psych that's what we gotta compare it to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is better than slang. I'll give it that. Oh, well, and this is the height of hysteria's, you know, popularity. Yeah, because the Dreadlines isn't even out yet. There, we're still we're still putting out, you know, singles from Hysteria in yeah, nineteen ninety. Love bites and fucking. Yeah. Fuck yeah, um, women. I don't remember which one was the last one, but there's some deep, deep singles on that album. I think I think the record label didn't know how to market it. I think yeah. Um, well, and I think that, you know, having been a product of that marketing, where the, they really were kind of known as, this is the band Bon Jovi wants you to listen to. Yeah, I think they were and, pigeonholed. Yeah, and this sounds nothing like Bon Jovi either, so. Yeah, Bon Jovi get dabbles later on. Bon Jovi yeah. dabbles, but they're definitely yeah, more yeah, party rock yeah. as opposed to blues rock. Yeah, in 1990, they were definitely more parties rock. Yeah, yeah. Even that, dare I say even pop. Even that album cover, like that doesn't look like an 80s band album cover, minus that fucking Cinderella logo. That's totally right. 80s. <laughs> and the hair. But like it the reminds heart... me of, you know, y'all know the band Firehouse? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of remind me of that. Honestly, yeah. you want to know yeah. what this, this album cover reminds me of? Alabama. Alabama? That's what that album cover reminds me of. I was trying to think about it. And that's or the Black Crows. Yeah. See, I haven't seen their album covers, but I know Alabama album covers, and that's that. <laughs> I mean, it's they're sit, they're literally sitting on a porch, and like it's like they want that porch rock, southern rock blues, right. yeah, skinner right. sound. That's kind of what they were going for, I think. Yep. But for they sure. weren't. They didn't fully commit, and they're still. They got a couple. There, like, I'm sure there's some uh, record label influence too of you know mm -hmm. you gotta look this certain way to appeal to a certain crowd like you know 1990 mtv's king it's all about how you look yeah video killed the radio star yeah well you know you are a radio Tape star. trading is killing the mp3 industry <laughs> yeah. cvpn Give us a sponsor, ExpressVPN. Right. That would have been a great segue into, you know, one of the people tracking you, you know. We got you, right. Express. Hard edit. I'd like to tell you about this new thing that's really going to change your life. It's called a um, toothbrush. I will say, I, I do kind of miss the commercials from the old, the way, you know, the way we do it now. We don't have commercials anymore, but those they were fun. fun. They were fun. They were fun. Yeah. Maybe you should put just insert a commercial for Cinderella on ice. Okay, if I when I'm editing it and I find it, I'll fucking do right. It. <laughs> Get your tickets now. Get your tickets now. All right. Um, who yeah, wants when to I, guess? When I saw them on this tour, it was Nelson and Lynch Mob opening up. Hmm. That's. An interesting lineup. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can guess this one. Okay. I think Cowboy is going to have it number three. Number three. You got it. I think Bill's going to have it number three. <clears throat> number two? Huh? No way. Uh. Yes, way. No fucking way. <laughs> Tim's going to have it number two. No. Num <laughs> number one. No. Wrong way. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I forgot what he fucking said. He said basically the same thing I said. I should have fucking known. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what he said about it. Yeah, I'm with you on this one. I'll, I'll say, my notes say, what a weird album. It started out damn strong. I was thinking it was going to take my number one spot, but that back half was so boring and formulaic. Keeping Long Winter at number one for now. But I do want to say for Night Songs. Um, yeah, 
I, I just want, I, I forgot to read my final notes for night songs on that video, but it says, so this, this is not my genre of music. So keep that in mind. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't something I would go back to either. Some pretty fun songs like the title track, nothing and back home again, using Def Leppard as a baseline. I've heard better Def Leppard and I've heard much worse Leopard. So I like, Fair. yeah, we'll get, to, yeah, we'll get, we'll, it'll make sense in the end. The color code will tell all. It always does. Mm-hmm. <coughs> all right, so that has been our rankings for Heartbreak Station and Cinderella. If you missed the previous videos, there's a playlist link down below. We are definitely a playlist channel. Sort sort our channel by a playlist and just look at all the bands that we covered. Go check out Def Leppard. You know, we rotate out each week who picks something so it could jump from Cinderella to Alice in Chains to Corrosion of Conformity. You have never no fucking know. Right. Um. Yeah, be safe. Make good decisions. Yeah.